Hello and welcome to the second big topic in our Operations Research 1 course. So in the first three weeks, you've um, learned about how to formulate a real-world problem into a linear programming problem. However, you have not learned how to solve the linear programming problem that has more than um, two variables, right? Um, so now here we are going to talk about a method an algorithm which is called the simplex algorithm but before we are going to that algorithm itself there are some things that we need to talk about first uh, about the terms and then special forms that is used in the algorithm so let's start um, today's topic with a form which is called standard form so let's start so again, we have learned about graphical methods, but it only works for two decision variables. Even three decision variables is already difficult to solve using the graphical method. So now I'm going to introduce simplex algorithm, which can solve more than two decision variables. And in the real world problem, you usually have a lot of decision variables, surely more than two or three. Now, this is very important. When you want to start using simplex algorithm, you must convert the linear programming model that you have into a form that is called standard form. A linear programming problem is called in a standard form if it satisfies these two requirements. The first is that all constraints must be equations, so we cannot have inequalities as the constraints. And then the second one in the sign restriction part, all variables must be non-negative. Let's look at an example. So this model is already in a standard form because first you see the sign in the constraint part, there are all equalities. And then in the sign restriction part, all variables are non-negative. Non-negative means that uh, all variables must be greater than or equal to zero. So this example is already in a standard form. Okay, so let's go through this example to formulate the problem into a linear programming model and then convert that model into a standard form. So in this problem, uh, ladder limited produces two types of belts. And then you see, whenever you see the require something and then uh, this much of resources available, you should have known by now that these sentences are talking about constraints, right? And then um, you see that regular belt contributes $3 to the profit and deluxe belt $4 to the profit. So the total profit that you have is 4 times x1. Um, let's say x1 is the deluxe belt that you produce. And then 3 times x2 here, which uh, X2 is the regular belt that you produce. So this is the definition of the decision variables. And this is the objective function. You have two constraints, the ladder constraints and the labor constraint. And finally, you have a signed restriction. Up to this point, you see that um, this model is not a standard form because you have inequality signs here. So that's why it is not in a standard form. How can we convert this uh, model into a standard form? So let's look at the next slide. I give you a pause uh, on this video to give you time to read this problem carefully. So in the model that we have so far, the constraint says x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 40. But we know that in the standard form, that sign cannot be an inequality sign. The sign must be equality. So we must do something such that x1 plus x2, we're going to do something equals 40. Now let me illustrate um, what happens here and what we're going to do. Because this constraint says x1 plus x2 can be any value as long as it's less than or equals to 40, you know that the range is between 0 and 40. 
okay cannot be negative because you know all variables must be uh, greater than or equals to zero so you have a range from zero to 40 and then x1 plus x2 can take any value as long as it's between 0 and 40. It can be something like that. It can be exactly 40, that's fine. And then it can be something like that. So let's take a look at this example. This is our x1 plus x2 at this much amount. And then if we want to do something such that x1 plus x2 equals 40, it means that we need to add the amount that we don't use. So the amount that we don't use, we call it as a slack. So we add a slack variable such that now x1 plus x2 plus the slack variable exactly equals 40. And then we also add a requirement saying that this slack variable must be greater than or equal to zero right because this is the amount that you don't use so the amount that you don't use is um, between zero and something so it cannot be negative because it is the amount that you don't use let's see the example for the second constraint 2x1 plus x2 less than or equals to 60. Same with before, our goal is to make the sign becomes equality. So now we have a range from 0 to 60, and then we have the amount of 2x1 plus x2 can be any amount as long as it's less than or equals to 60, between 0 and 60, I mean. Now, um, the same as before, to make it exactly equal 60, we add the amount that we don't use. We call it a slack variable because this is the second constraint. Our variable becomes S2. So S1 is the slack for the first constraint. S2 is the slack for the second constraint. Same with before, we say that the amount that we don't use or the slack variable must be greater than or equals to zero cannot be negative so once we've done that we have this standard form so now our linear programming model is already in a standard form because both constraints are already in the format of equalities and then all variables now they are already non-negative so this is the standard form of the linear uh, programming model of the ladder limited problem. Okay, so we have seen how we can handle constraint with less than or equal to sign. Now let's talk about how we can handle the constraints with the greater than or equal to sign. So this linear programming model is taken from the diet problem the problem that we've discussed a few weeks before. So here in the diet problem, let's take a look at one constraint. It says that um, the amount of calorie that you consume must be greater than or equal to 500 calories. So we are going to convert that into um, the format of the standard form, which means the sign must be equals instead of greater than or equals to. How can we do that? Well, let's do the illustration again. So if you consume that much amount of calorie, which is below 500, this is not allowed. If you consume exactly 500 calories, this is okay. And then if you consume anything more than 500 calories, it's still okay. But now if you want to create um, the equation that says something in the left hand side exactly equals 500 this is what you need to do from the amount of calorie that you consume you need to subtract that by the excess so how much uh, your over consumption is right so the amount of the calorie that you consume minus the excess will be exactly equal 500 so let's say you consume 800 calories, means that 800 minus 
300, your overconsumption, equal 500 exactly. So the excess is again must be greater than or equals to zero because this uh, shows how much your overconsumption is. So we do the same thing for all the constraints um, in the original problem because they are all in the sign of greater than or equals to. So we have a minus E1 in the first constraint, minus E2 in the second constraint, minus E3 in the third constraint, and then minus E4 in the fourth constraint. Remember to write down that all of these excess variables must be greater than or equals to zero. Okay, so here's the summary. For each of the constraints that has the less than or equal to sign, we define a slack variable as i for the i constraint, which means that is the amount of resource unused in the i constraint. So how much you don't use from the available resource in the i constraint. And finally, do not forget to write down as i greater than or equals to zero. If you see a constraint with a sign of uh, greater than or equal to, you need to define an excess variable EI, which is the amount of the resource in the I constraint that you over satisfy. For example, like you over consume the calories. And then although in the constraint itself, we subtract um, the left hand side with EI means that a something minus EI. Remember that in the sign restriction part, you need to write down that EI is always greater than or equals to zero. So in the constraint itself, uh, the sign for EI is minus EI, but in the sign restriction, the EI itself is non-negative or greater than or equals to zero. So let's take a quick look at this example. In the original linear programming, you see that you have less than or equal to, you have greater than or equal to, signs in the constraints. Now we need to convert this into a standard form. So it's quite easy for each of the constraint that has less than or equal to, you add them by slack variables. So plus S1, plus S2, plus S3. For the greater than or equal to, you uh, create an excess variable and then put this minus E4. And then remember that all slack variables must be greater than or equals to zero. And then the excess variable is also greater than or equals to zero. So that is our standard form linear programming for this example. Okay, so as usual, I will give you some questions to check your understanding. I will give you the answer after the pause on the video to give you the time to really think about the answer. So given a linear programming model in a standard form, and then if we set x1 equals 15, x2 equals 20, it means that we have five square yards of ladder unused and we have 10 hours of labor unused. Is this statement true or false? Well, the answer is true because if you plug in x1 equals 15, x2 equals 20, so 15 plus 20 equals 25, so s1 is 5, and this is the correct meaning. And then 2x1, 2 times 15 is 30, plus um, 20 equals 50, so s2 is 10, so this is correct, and the interpretation is also correct. So the statement is true. If we set x1 equals 100 and x2 equals 200 for the same problem, this is an infeasible solution because it causes the slack variables to be negative. Is this statement true or false? The answer is true. This is an infeasible solution such that if you plug in these numbers, you will see that the slack variables becomes negative and it is not allowed. So here, given the standard form of the diet problem, if we set x1 equals 2, x3 equals 4, x2 and x4 equals 0, it means that we consume 
1,400 calories. It also means that we over satisfy the calorie constraint because the constraint says we need to consume at least 500. Here we over consume the calorie such that the value of E1 is minus 900. Is this statement true or false? The answer is false. We oversatisfy the constraint by 900, but it means that E1 itself is positive 900. It's just here that we put the minus sign in front of E1, but the value of E1 itself is positive 900. Okay, so by the end of this video, you should have been able to convert a linear programming model into a standard form. See you in the next video. Thank you.